What's up, guys? You're king of the night, Vincent Valentine EX Turk. On this new Final Fantasy segment, Final Fantasy 15 segment. And I'm going to answer some questions. Or should I say, one big question. Why, is, you know, why Ravis, Nox, Florey, and Arden, Azunia are the two strongest members of the Niflheim Empire? And this will go into a lot of things. For right now, I'm going to actually start this segment with Ravis Knox Florey. At a very young age, Ra Ravis has climbed up to the rankings and became the high commander after Glocka's death, you know. Meaning Idolus planned for Ravis to take his place. And I think it's possible because Verstel seen something in Ravis to make, you know, Ravis the strongest possibly the strongest member even stronger than the Emperor himself later on you know considering that Ravis's metal arm from uh, Verstel Ravis is the only one who could control the power of MTs you know and there's must be a reason first he's not Lucy it's Kylie so the powers won't clash you know second you know you need someone just as strong as Noctis and in the beginning, in, in, you know, even in King's Glaive. King's Glaive, Ravis was a little bit stronger than Noctis. Considering his training to be king of, you know, Tenebrae. You know. And not only that, he's also the king of Tenebrae. So he actually has political influences. Which the Niflheim Empire could actually use. As well. What also the other factor that makes Ravis the sh one of the strongest members uh, uh, members of Niflheim Empire is his boss fight. The first time you fought him when before you had your weapons and stuff like that, before you completed the game, or at least for me at least, this, you know, experience may vary, but if you just beat the game real fast without doing no side quests and stuff like that, Ravis is really the hardest boss you could ever fight. Because he got attacks that can one hit all your all your characters and you. So you have to have plenty of Phoenix Downs, 14 Phoenix Downs, and 14 High Elixirs, and 14 Elixirs is recommended. Especially when you have to fight his second form. Which his second form is a formidable foe. In fact, his boss battle was even tougher than Arden's boss, ba boss battle. Tougher than the final boss battle. Now that says a lot. Ravis has actually earned his spot for the reason why he's the one of the strongest uh, members of Niflheim. Not to mention, Ravis could actually turn two forms. Even though the black one's a failed version of his demon form, the purple form is pretty much ten times stronger than Idolus in his demon form. Ten times stronger than the emperor he worked for. Pretty much, he could actually go on par with Arden with this form. Because he actually was the only Magitek demon that could go two forms. And I wouldn't count Versteel's conscience, you know, plasmatic um, transfers. Like he when he transferred into that um, ape thing that could turn, that has an Efrit looking form. And then Immortalis. That, that's not technically transforming. That's just transforming your consciousness to the weapon to make him fight. Ravis actually perfected Verstel's formula when Arden rebuilded him into a demon because Ravis could transform into two Ravis could transform into two forms. You beat him in his black form, like beat his health all the way down, his purple form is ten times stronger. That's why I said if you have not, you know, done the side quest and just beat the game like every other casual for Final Fantasy or other casual gamer. You actually had to use your Phoenix Downs, your high elixirs, and your elixirs in the boss battle. I can't imagine how tough Ravis would be when you had to face him as a human. If Arden would have never stopped that battle, I'm pretty sure game. I'm pretty sure the reason why Tabitha scrapped it were Ravis versus versus Noctis in that one when you arc where you had to get the Regalia back, is because Ravis is too powerful. Ravis is OP, you know. He's OP. He probably would have killed Noctis in there. Well, not really. It's, you know, it would have been stopped. But I'm pretty sure that the fight, the, the, I'm pretty sure the battle would be pretty, 
will be pretty rough. But there's a good reason for that. Nonetheless, like I said, Idolis replaced Galaka for this dude. So there was something special in Ravis. And even, you know, even before his Manu Magitek arm. But even after that, and after Arden took Ravis' corpse, which Arden's the one who killed Ravis, his former partner of the Niflheim Empire, and actually used Verstel's perfected formula. In fact, Ravis was 50 times stronger than he has ever been in his whole life, thanks to Arden. Now, to end the Ravis thing, there's also another reason why Ravis is partners with with Arden Azunia. Because. Even Idolus somewhat knows. That Arden's a little bit stronger than he is. So put two of the strongest characters. That put fear in every country. Pretty much. Arden and Ravis. Were like the two. Most feared. Most feared. Most feared govern. You know. Most feared. Members of the empire. You know. For good reason, and there's another good reason why too, because they both have a they both affect Noctis. You know, Arden affects Noctis in a way because Arden is Noctis is great 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 grandfather, and Ravis is Noctis's rival. You know, and Noctis's rival, and Ravis wants revenge on the Lucius Kylians at least until he finds out it's not their fault. Now, going now to finish this, uh, the Ravis segment out, you know, yes, Ravis and Arden are the two most dangerous characters you could ever face in Niflheim. You want you, those two come out, I wouldn't be fucking with the Niflheim Empire. And, you know, Ravis was the perfected form of Magitek that Prompto never got to be. So, now get to our second member, Arden Azunia. Do we even need to go why Arden Azunia is also the second, as is the is is one of the strongest members? Not second, he'd be the first technically, but boss battle wise, no, he was relatively weak in this boss battle, which again Tabata fucked up real bad right there. I get that Noctis gets god powers. I get Noctis is a god now. It makes sense, but come on, man. You could have, you could have pulled, you could have made it like Caius. Maybe not make him tra make Arden transform, but you know, make Arden get stronger every time Noctis, you know, strikes him back. You know, since you know Arden is the king of the Star Scourge and king of demons. Come on, man. I mean, how do you forget that's that's a power that's beyond anything normal? But anyways. We already know Arden is the strongest because Arden originated the Scourge. Even though, yes, Ifrit created the Star Scourge and put in the volcano. But without Arden, it wouldn't have spread this much. Without Arden, the events of Final Fantasy XV would have never have happened. And then once you see Arden's face, he is the Star Scourge. He is the walking Star Scourge because after you defeat Ifrit, nothing happens. You just defeat Ifrit and get his mark. But when you defeat Arden... The whole world loses and everything turns back to normal. The darkness is lifted for good. And all the demons are banished. This guy has the control of all the demons. He could control the Iron Giants, Gargantuas, the Arachnades, whatever demons of the Star Scourge that exist. You know, and he probably could control Magitek because Magitek's made from demons. You know... I mean, not even Verstel would mess with him. Like, he, because Verstel is Arden's best friend, I'm pretty sure he knows about Arden. He pretty much knows that Arden is the Star Scourge. That he is the walking Star Scourge, who was once one of the strongest Lucius Kylie members. Not to mention, he's also, not only that, but Arden has the power of the Lucius Kyliums, but corrupted with the Scourge. And that's why... Arden's armager is pink, meaning that it's a much more fiercer. It's like really fiercer than the regular Lucius Kylian blue. Because, you know, it's pretty much it's pretty much royal arms fused with evil demonic energy from the Star Scourge. 
So Arden, pretty much, if, if anything, this makes sense, think of Star Wars, you know. The red Sith lightning that Darth Plagueis has stronger than the blue. Well, in this case, it's kind of like that. The blue royal arms are good and strong, even when you get the full Lucius Kylian power, but already infused it with demonic energy, thus making it more fiercer than the blue. So, Arden used to be with Lucius Kylian, who actually still kept managed to keep some of his royal arms, even though he never ascended. And he fused it with his demonic Star Scourge powers, which made it stronger. And come on, man. Arda could take down Idolus. In fact, he did take out Idolus. That's why you see Idolus' body in the throne room. And you see him singly handy killing Ravis in disguise as Noctis form. So, and not only that, this guy, Arda, could actually turn into anybody. He has the same kind of power Genova had in Final Fantasy VII. Arden has the same kind of power. He could turn to anybody. Arden could turn into your mama. Arden could turn into a hoe you fall in love with and and, 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 and turn around and kill you. Arden has the power to shapeshift. You kidding me? Just that power alone. I don't want to fuck with a dude like that. He can shapeshift. Yeah, it's like you don't even know who, I mean, and I don't even think it's gender exclusive. I think he could turn to anybody. Anybody who's he's dealt with before or has uh, remembrance to, he can use his Orban Bry powers, which he's also an Orban Bry clan member as well. So he's a Lucius Kylian with with some of the royal with with uh, the some of the royal arms fused with Star Scourge energy. He's an Orban Bright, so he could shape shift and do higher level magic, and he's the Star Scourge. You know, and I'm pretty sure Verstel has enhanced Arden with some Magitek energy as well. And that's probably why he could control the power of his um, Arbiter with no problem to fight the, despite the fact that Royal Arms are supposed to be for good Lucius Kylium Kings. The reason why Arden could control his because Verstel pretty much edited his so he could still use it and it made it stronger, more fiercer. So, Arden is part of a, a long line of stuff. He's an Orban Bride. He's a previous Lucius Kylian member that's existed for 3,000 years. So, he had 3,000... Arden had 3,000 years of training. 3,000 years of train is, training. And then he's a Star Skirt. So, it kept him immortal for all this time. For 3,000 years. So, Arden can only get stronger. The Because... See, the problem with Idolus and stuff like that, if he wasn't a demon, he would have died easily. You know, but thanks to him, the Star Scourge, it helped him too. But Arden was able to kill Idolus even under the Scourge. Arden was able to kill Ravis and rebuild Ravis to who he is. So he's, he's actually the one who created Ravis into a demon. So, yes, those two characters are the most dangerous characters for good reasons. Not to mention, Arden's a governor position. And he can get anyone to agree with Niflheim's rules. And, well, Ravis is the muscle. You know, everybody's afraid of Ravis. As you can see in Tenebrae when you talk to those people. So, that's why those two are the most dangerous characters. So, may the crystal be with you. And tell me what you think on the subject.